from the designer of Suburbia and Castles of Mad King Ludwig comes Maglev Metro, the magnetic rail game by Bezier Games. It plays two to four players and it takes roughly about an hour or so to play and it's for ages 13 and up. And in the game Maglev Metro, you're basically going to be creating a magnetic railway station um, in one of two different locations, one being uh, Manhattan. And you're going to be utilizing your magnetic rails and of course the different railways that are of your color Alert similar to these guys here. Uh, they're going to be shaped in either these straightaways or they're going to be curved and you'll be placing them down. You'll be utilizing actions, transporting passengers from one area to another as quietly as possible because that's the point. You get rid of all the old, uh, outdated styles of those metro stations that are all loud and guzzle gas. And you upgrade to the more energy efficient uh, metro stations, the Maglev uh, Magnetic Railway System. Uh, and this game is kind of like a pickup and delivery game. You'll be gathering passengers and robots passengers and taking them from one location to another no more are going to spawn you're going to then replace them and put them into your uh, your little railway train and move them across utilizing your tactical placement of the tiles in order to make sure you get the best railway system possible there's certain rules as to how you place and where you can place uh, you can also place your railway on top of another player so that each player can have a single tile in that same space and be able to go through and your basically objective is to uh, be as efficient as humanly possible. Pick up delivery, resource management, and of course uh, placement, the puzzle aspect of the game. If you like a puzzle game and you're interested in taking a look, let me show you down below how to play the game, what comes inside, then my review of the game, and finally an outro. Alright, let's take a look now. Welcome to Maglev Metro, the Magnetic Levitation Railway. And in this case, we're gonna be playing with two players. However, I did put out these guys here to show you that you can play up to four players. But in this case, we'll go ahead and set these aside so you can't see them. Uh, there's also gonna be four different decks of cards that you'll take out there at the top here, and you will shuffle them individually. There's also going to be a score sheet, which you won't need until the end of the game. So I'll just go ahead and place that aside as well. Each player is going to get their own unique distinct player board. Right now I have blue and I have orange give one player the first player marker, and then give every single player one card from every single one of the decks above here, except for this deck here when you're playing your first game or two. This is going to be the advanced objective deck, unless you just want to go ahead and jump into the game. Uh, you're also going to be going ahead and giving every player their specific uh, metro station uh, railway lines, which are going to either have a straightaway or they're going to have a curve to them. Uh, the curves don't necessarily matter. They're just a way so that everybody can see all the different railways when you're placing them on top of each other in different locations because you might end up doing something like this where you place this here and this player places one just like that. You want to make sure that they're separate so that people can see the difference between the two because each railway train can go on platforms that have their own color on there. Um, after you go ahead and deal out every player, their little tiles here and your, their cards, you're also going to go ahead and deal each player one of each of the robots. And there's going to be a gold, a bronze, and a silver. And they can place them in any of the units per action area. This whole entire column here, place them in any of these areas right here. Whenever you place robots from now on, you'll place them from your left-hand side to your right-hand side. One, two, three, and four. And you'll notice that any spaces that already have those guys there are already free to use at the beginning of the game. Uh, in a two-player game, you'll set aside certain robots and uh, passengers as well. And in this case, you're setting aside five of every color, which are at the very top here. These guys are set aside. You won't be utilizing them. Uh, you're also going to go ahead and place, uh, depending on the board you're playing, we're playing Manhattan in this uh, circumstance. So you're going to be placing down these uh, four four pieces and to make the Manhattan board. Uh, place your studios, embassies, stores, offices, your warehouse, lab, and factory. Put one of each color of the different meeples on top. And then the rest of them will be set aside next to them. Uh, you're also going to put the rest of the robots into the bag here. You're going to get a bag in the game. And you're going to randomly distribute them into the different locations. Like, for instance, here there's two guys. So you'll pull two and place them here on Queen's Plaza. You'll do that for the rest of the board. Uh, this board specifically has a hub station, or the Grand Central Station. I'm going to go ahead and place this there. And then you'll have your own uh, your own little uh, magnetic rails. You can go ahead and place them on the board here. It doesn't matter where you place them to begin the game with. And then you are ready to begin. You have your specific railway, you've got your board, your robots to basically increase your activity for your different actions you can take, and you're going to have your objective cards. Objective cards will range in value and type. Uh, this one here says you need a uh, 
sets of commuters, and for each set you have, at the end of the game, you'll get four points. Uh, this one here says you need three straight tiles on a river hex. Uh, sorry, you'll get, you get three points for every straight tile on a river hex you place. And then for every direct connection from a pink location or a red location to a purple one, you'll get five points. So these are your objectives throughout the game that you're trying to accomplish while you're also picking up and delivering. Uh, in the game, it's very simple. The first player will start, and they get two actions to start the game off with. You're always going to have two, but whenever you fill certain areas, Areas, you're going to get additional actions and the areas that you fill are going to be bordered around these areas here So you'll see them and you can have a total of five actions at the end of the game If you're very lucky and are willing to spend those resources and in this case here um, I'm gonna start with just two and these are the different actions you can take you can uh, a place tracks out um, Adjacent to tracks you've already placed you can move your railway cart, which is your, your color here uh, You can have a capacity that fits units inside of your specific railway train up to four uh, you can go ahead and pick up units up to four. You can drop off up to four refill stations. You'll pull guys from this bag here and place them onto the different stations, as well as, of course, the hub. The hub has specific unique rules. Uh, you're also going to be able to adjust your characters on this board here. Only robots, though, never your little passengers, the ones that are of color. Uh, you're also going to be able to be able to build stations, provided you have a guy there, and you can obviously reverse your cha train. Normally, you can't um, in certain instances, though, but with an action, you'll be able to do that if that spot's filled in. Uh, this spot over here will allow you to A, place and place the specific locations and gather and drop off units of that specific color. Uh, and there's four different colors here, illustrated by these four different locations here. Over here is going to give you victory points if you are able to make columns and or rows. It will score you points per color of the different types, as well as per different types of links when you place down your uh, railways. And then the bottom here, for each one of these three that you fill up in these three rows here, will allow you to score more than just one of these cards. In general, you can only score one, but for every row you fill in, you'll be able to score an additional one. When you're playing the basic game, ignore one of these rows here, because you're not going to be utilizing this extra deck of cards. But if you do use this extra deck of cards here, you'll want to fill all three of those in. To begin the game, take your two actions and utilize them. Each one of these specific areas is an action, and when you perform both of your actions, your turn will end. So for instance, if I'm going to start with orange, blue will start off the board. I'll place orange on the hub here, and then I'll take my actions. Action one, I will place track. I can place up to two tracks or two points of tracks. In general, when you place a track, you'll place it on the board, attach it to a hub, and then you will be done. If you want to place it across a river location, however, it's going to cost you two points. And in this specific board, you can't place any tracks in Central Park. So action one, and then maybe I want to go to 96th Street. So I'll take this as action, uh, part of action one as well. So that's one point and two points for my tracks. Then my next action will be to move. So I'll move from here to here. And I only have one movement, two movement, so I can move just like that. And that would end my turn. And then the next player would get a chance to go. This player would place their, their little train on the board here. I could then place one track. Maybe I want to go to Wall Street. So I'll place that there. And that's one action. I only have one on my track there area there. And then I only have one on my move. So I can only travel one space. And that would end my turn there. So how you place these guys at the beginning of the game is definitely going to matter as far as how valuable your actions are going to be. This player will get a chance to go now. And this player unfortunately cannot build stations because he has not placed a unit in the build stations area. So uh, we'll do another action. We'll show you the adjust action. This action here will let me adjust one of the robots I have on my board to any other location. So I'll go ahead and place that there onto the build station, and that's gonna cost an action. And then my second action is to build a station. And in this case, I'm gonna build one of these three, because these are the three available that I can build for free. And I'll go ahead and build um, a warehouse. So I'll take this out of here. Uh, this is gonna go into uh, my board, and I can go ahead and place it anywhere I want. Maybe I'll place it back into capacity. And this will go right here. Whenever you have one of your locations uh, attached to a specific hub, it will allow you to travel onto that hub if you have an action for it. And uh, any units that are found on these locations here will go directly onto that specific hub. But because I'm out of actions, it's no longer my turn and I will pass to the blue player. And the blue player will once again go ahead and do their turn. They're placing one of these guys here on the board, uh, just like that. And then their second action will move here. Now, back to the orange player. Orange player can then move on to this location. Now, they don't have to spend all their movement if they don't want to. That's one action. And then their second action is they can pick up. And they can pick up two units. Uh, sorry, they can pick up one unit. 
Uh, so they'll take one of these guys of their choice and place it onto their little cart there. And then um, if they had another action, they could go ahead and uh, pick up another or they could choose to move. Um, and that would be the end of their turn. And basically the idea of the game is you're going to be going from here to dropping them off. You can never place units when refilling uh, on the same location of the same color. So you'll never place a gold unit here. You'll never place one of these three type of units here. And the same can be said for these colored locations as well. And so this character, this guy here is going to need to go back to this hub, drop this guy off. And whenever you drop off units, you'll place them onto your board here. Dropping off units will allow you to place them. And depending on what colors are available, will determine how and where you can place these units. Maybe you want to start gathering red units. So you'll place this one here. Or maybe you want to start gathering pink and you'll place this one here. Obviously, you'll start with these two first, and then you move on to these two, because these two specifically require the colors of the first two. When you fill these areas in, uh, you're going to be able to place these little locations here, and you'll be able to pick up and drop off these locations here. Uh, these characters from this location specifically and that'll be good because it lets you place it onto this board here allowing you to progress by gathering these locations as well as this board here scoring you points when you place them on your board and the game will just keep going like that players will inevitably start collecting their units and at a certain point when all the units run out the game is going to end and you're going to tally up points you'll tally up points based on your rows and columns here based on the different uh, connection links you have on the board here as well as how many pink units you have and those are going to be bonuses if you can fill these areas in you'll score points for each of these rows based on the cards you have you'll check the board here to determine how many uh, specific locations you have accomplished and uh, whoever has the total tally will win you'll use this little tracker here to determine that uh, some little things to note is you can have as many uh, of these tracks coming off of the hub but only uh, they can never go around and connect back to each other so they always have to go from one out um, you can never connect uh, from more than one location to another uh, as well you can only do it once each um, so for instance this guy here he can go from here to here from here to here from here to here from here to here that's not a problem at all um, and yeah you'll be traveling around placing these guys out here gathering these units bringing them back to their locations and scoring them now whenever you course, gather one of these guys here uh, you're going to get this for free you'll be able to take these and put them into the bag because whenever you get these specific hubs and place them onto the board. These guys, well, the affiliated units or passengers, will go into this bag here, which will allow you to refill stations. So for instance, if this guy was here and he wanted to refill the station, and let's say that this pink one was out for some reason, maybe this pink one was, uh, maybe it was over here and the blue player had accomplished getting this, this pink location here. Uh, these guys would all go into this bag over here and you would pull out one unit from the bag and place it here. It can never be gold though. It can be any other color because basically you need to take the units from one color to another and you're not going to want to just place this. The, the rules would be not very fun if you could just place the same unit onto the same location, thusly picking it up and dropping it off in the same location. That wouldn't even make sense thematically. Uh, but anyway, that's the basic idea of the game. Like I said before, it plays with up to four players and it has a backside of the board. This board here is for a quicker game, a more forgiving game, and the back version of the game is for a more complex, more in-depth game. And the final thing, like I said, is these additional cards. If you want to play an even more in-depth game, you can start scoring points based on these which involve your player board for the game Magalove Metro. So let's go ahead and discuss the game and, of course, my review of the game. The first thing we'll talk about is component quality and art. The components of the game are high-quality, thick cardboard. You're going to be getting an actual magnetic train, which is going to have a metal piece to the bottom and it's plastic on the top that differentiates itself between what colors you're playing with and, of course, your board so you'll know what color your train is and uh, your tiles. Your tiles are going to be the plexiglass tiles with the line illustrating what color you're going to be utilizing and they can be placed on top of each other and they'll fit on the board. The board's going to come in four different pieces and when you... Ah, put them together, there's two different sides and they're really easy to determine where they go. And of course, putting them on the board, these little extra tiles here fit really nicely. They're double thick, so you're not gonna have an issue of making sure that these stay on. In fact, I, you can actually get it upside down and it won't cause a problem. And putting the board together is really easy as well. Uh, it's gonna come with, of course, the paper, which is nice as well as the tokens that are all unique to specifically this game and the meeples, the cards are high quality. Very, very good. Uh, the artwork to the game is, 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 is is, is something I'm not used to, right? It's It's got that kind of like 
retro tech feel to it. Um, all the characters are kind of like amorphic in a way. Uh, it's, it's good artwork, don't get me wrong, uh, especially on, on the cover of the box. But for the most part, the game itself is kind of like this unique style of artwork I haven't seen a, a lot of. I think I've seen a little bit in like Suburbia and whatnot. If you like that type of artwork, you're gonna like this one as well. But it does exactly what I would expect and want it to do. And it's really easy to tell the difference between your tiles and your locations and your board and your tokens, which is really nice. Um, another thing with the game, let's talk about gameplay. Uh, in this game, it's a pick up deliver game. You're gonna be having a certain amount of units that you're going to travel from one location or one hub to another hub, uh, placing down new hubs, placing down new tiles, utilizing action management in the best possible way. You can gain more actions at the cost of not being able to move as fast or not being able to place as fast or adjust your board. All the different actions on this board illustrate what you can do in the game, uh, but you have to have a certain number of, of, of these characters here, and if you don't have enough on the board, depending on the number of players you're playing, you're probably not going to be able to fill this board up or you won't be able to, and you have to kind of be selective as to where you place, what type of points you want, uh, what type of extra actions, and of course what passengers and locations you want to place, and then how strong your actions are. Uh, this is actually a player reference as well because it kind of gives you all the different actions you can take, what actions you can take, and how many of them, and then of course your points that you'll score at the end of the game, which is really nice actually. Uh, as far as the game rules go, it's rather simple. Once you understand the setup of the game, you can get into it, and if you don't know the rule for a specific type of action, you can simply look it up real quick in the book and you'll understand how it works. Uh, placement for the tiles is pretty simple as well, and they give you a variation of different tiles for the plexiglass ones to make them thinner and longer, uh, thinner or shorter uh, for the turns and for the straightaways so that basically every single person's tile can fit in a single space, which is nice. You can tell the difference between yours and another player's colors, which works very well. I have no idea if this is colorblind friendly, but it, based on how I've gathered from other games, this one does look and does appear to be, and the colors are very distinct from one another. Um, the cards themselves are all the different actions and objectives that you're going to be trying to uh, obtain throughout the game, and depending on how many additional action uh, rows here that you can accomplish, you're going to be able to get more of them, which is nice. You can kind of either decide, do you want to worry more about your board or worry more about the main board of the game in order to score those points at the end of the game? Because at the end of the, at the, end of the game, all that matters is scoring the most points, utilizing objectives, and of course your board and whatever you may have left or any bonuses that you may get. There's also a slight little additional variant that adds an extra additional deck, uh, card uh, set of cards to the game, which will allow you to utilize the bottom area here and which you normally wouldn't have to do. And of course, depending on the side of the board, will allow you to play with certain things like this hub here. And of course, different types of locations like this warehouse here. There'll be additional ones or uh, less of one type and more of another type. Uh, this game is one of those things where you're definitely going to be engine building. There's a puzzle aspect to it, which is what my wife really liked. But what my wife really did not like is the design um, mechanically as far as engine building goes. Because as your engine gets rolling and you get more actions and more control of the field, it gets easier for you. And if somebody's slower, uh, it's going to be more difficult for them to catch up. I don't think there's a lot of ways, a lot of catch-up mechanics in this game. It's not very forgiving if you're not prepared for it. So your first time playing with any experienced players, do not expect to win this game. It's one of those things that requires a larger learning curve. But as you play more and as you understand how the game develops and how it works, and the fact that the game gets faster and faster with each turn, allowing you to do more things as well, you'll start to appreciate the complexity complexity and the challenging uh, aspects of this game as well. So if you like a game with a challenge complexity, which is probably on the medium to high tier, something that you have to learn and get better at and improve, not only as the game progresses, but within each and every single game you play. Like for instance, if my wife ever did want to play with me again, she would probably beat the pants off me because she would understand the different styles of engine building in this game. And there are different routes you can take based on your board. But at the end of the day, it's going to come down to your engine building skills and how you utilize the passengers and the road robots to facilitate your actions and of course the points at the end of the game. So if you don't mind a game that's not as forgiving to players there in the back and you want something that involves a little bit of pick up and deliver as well as engine building then this game is definitely one I would suggest playing. I had a ton of fun with this game but I do understand my wife's concerns and of course players who probably haven't played a game similar to this. It's going to be a little more on the challenging side until you improve which is also nice because of the extra variant that is involved with it, the extra deck of cards which I would probably just play with in general if you're 
you're a more experienced gamer, but if you're not, it's a good way to slowly build into a game like this. And obviously if you're newer to the game and somebody's teaching you, make sure they're not like trying to go too difficult on you. At least you understand all the rules beforehand, but otherwise you're gonna have a good time. At the end of the game, you'll take this little score sheet, you'll write down all the different points you're gonna score at the end of the game, and whoever has the most is the winner. And then of course you can play again or switch the board, which is another really cool thing. The two boards do play differently and have a different setup, which is also a nice little aspect to this game. Overall, a solid fun game for those of you who do not mind a challenging experience, especially with experienced players. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Maglov Metro by Bezier Games. If you're interested in picking it up, there is a link down below in the description where you can purchase this game. It's currently available for purchase, which means it is right down there in the description. You can also go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, hit that subscribe button, and of course the bell notification button somewhere right here. I would greatly appreciate it. I'll let you get uh, in tune with the rest of our videos here, see uh, more games that you may be interested in purchasing or not. Choice is yours. Uh, you can also go ahead and check out our Discord and of course our live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST on all three different streaming platforms, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And of course, you can take a look at Kelly's game, Moonshell Mermaid game, the backer, late backer pledge backer kit will be available uh, very very soon the next couple days hopefully so you can be able to purchase that as well as any add-ons if you would like and of course you can also go ahead and check out our patreon thank you patreon members for supporting us it greatly helps us and it does allow us to play games just like this one on the stream all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to picking up and delivering you to your local metro station next time